This is a Davy Z video. Hope you enjoy it. Um, did the best I can with it. So sit back, relax, hit subscribe, leave a comment. I don't need a plug, alright? No plug. I'm just baby Z from Chicago, New York, outside of Buffalo. I posted a video a little bit ago, and it was in regards to, I can't remember. <laughs> Old age creeping in. Anyways, um, this video is how to survive in a band, a local band. I've been a musician here in Buffalo, New York for the last, I'm 56, so let's just give it 41 years, we'll say, okay? I've played with four bands in my life. And the reason I've only played in four bands is because I was committed. I made sure that the guys in my band understood that I was an equal part of everything. Equal. Equal. Okay? I see these freaking bands out there fighting. You get two guys from this part of the band. You got the bass player and drummer over here talking shit about one group of guys. And then you got the guitar player and singer and keyboard player over here talking to, you know, about these guys. It happens, folks. All the time. I've seen it too many times. So many bands in my life I've seen break up because of petty any bullshit. Prima donnas. They all think that they're a rock star here in Buffalo. You know, nobody's a rock star. Even rock stars in their own minds, they can't believe that they're a rock star, okay? I've been playing in front of people my whole life. Nine years old, I picked up that trumpet and I got in front of maybe 200 people in my church, St. John the Baptist in Black Rock in Buffalo, New York. I don't know, nine, it was 1961, or 71, 1971, St. John the Baptist, talent show. But when the saints come marching in, and raindrops keep falling on my head, and the applause that I got, just, I can't tell you the feeling I got as a little nine-year-old boy with my little coronet, and uh, the rush, the excitement of knowing that somebody enjoyed what I just performed okay that's what it's all about it's not about being in a band locally or any band is not about competing with each other number one in the band or competing with any other band especially when you're local you know it's tough enough out there getting gigs we guys struggle man you know we put on good shows you know, we, we put in a lot of hours, we, we, we do everything we can to make the show good. Every, every musician goes through this. The problem is, some club owners don't understand that. Some agencies don't understand that. There's a few agencies here in Buffalo, none that I work with, but I know that, you know, they're paying their bands three, four hundred dollars. Meanwhile, they're charging the customer six, seven hundred dollars. And they'll tell the club, pay the band this much money and then pay me the rest. And don't talk to the band. I found that out the hard way years ago in Pennsylvania with a, a, a agency out there in the Warren area. I ain't like that. But, believe me, when you're a local in a band, especially if you got a good following, Sometimes the guys in the band think they, they're rock stars. We don't have that problem in my band, not one bit. We've all done our thing through the years. We've all got our professions. We've all got our families. Family comes first in our band. Um, you know, anything goes in our band, any music. Um, if someone comes up to, at us at rehearsal, you know, one of the guys in the band that is at rehearsal says, hey Dave, 
What do you think of this song? And it's a 1940s Tony Bennett tune. Let's do it, man. If you think that song is going to make the crowd move and, and want to listen or dance, let's do it. See, th that's the other thing. A lot of these bands get in fights about material. You know, you are who you are. No matter what, when you play in a band, you are who you are. If you want to um, play classic rock, you know, your, your typical standard classic rock, give me three steps, you know, Leonard Skinner, three, um, uh, <laughs> Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin, Boston, Styx, you know, the classic rock, or even the, even the heavier stuff like Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, um, you know, if you're going to cover heavy acid rock, Deep Purple, for example, that driving shit, you know, you better expect to not have a dance crowd. You're not going to fucking have it. It doesn't work that way. Them people that like that music are there to listen and watch. They want to see the visuals. They don't care about, you know, Brown Eyed Girl or Kryptonite. They want to hear their shit, man. You're there to make that happy, then you give them the shit. But good luck finding a club besides one, maybe two in Western New York that's going to put you in there if you don't have at least 200 people following that kind of band. Ask that 80s hair band, ask 1980 something, any band like that. Two great bands. They have a great following because they know what the hell they're doing, man. I know them guys. At least 1980 something. The drummer's a friend of mine, John. Or is he? he? Doing, da, 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 da. That's their genre. That's their thing. They like that driving music. We've got about uh, five to ten minutes left. Um, so with that driving music, you know, that gets people up and, you know, rah. then you got your disco bands. You know, your, your, uh, your pop party bands, you know, with the girls doing, you know what I mean, and the guys doing their Michael Jackson and their, you know, Bruno Mars and, and all that happy, happy shit, you know. I mean, we could probably do that kind of music, but it, we're just too old, man. So we stick to the classic danceable stuff. We do the Beatles. We do Three Doors Down. We do um, um, Van Morrison. We do The Doors. We do Cool and the Gang. You know, we do Jethro Tull. We do Frank Sinatra. We do Satchmo. We do Casey and the Sunshine Band. We have a, a complete mix. We can go into a, a wedding and they want to hear disco music and dance material. We got you all night because between sets we play that type of music they want. So we normally do two sets at weddings, do them a two and a half, three hour show. During our break, we provide them with that type of music they requested for the band. Through the PA system, either on an iPad, iPod, whatever you got. Um, you know, and, and that makes the people happy. And then when we're performing, they're out there dancing. I don't care what anybody says, if you want a dance party band, Play that funky music, White Boy is the number one song. <laughs> the minute you hit that bum, 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 the fucking dance floor is packed. People are dancing. And if you wind that into another dance song, you keep them dancing. It's a no brainer. People are dancing, they get thirsty, they converse, they flirt. <laughs> that was my number one rule never pick up a girl at a gig. The love of my life was at a gig, and we've been married almost 16 years. Nope. 14 years. Nope. <laughs> 13 years, we'll be together 16 years. My wife, Sean. Anyways, you know, you, you got to cater to the crowd. So what we offer is we offer a nice, danceable rock and roll show. We do the four tops. We do the Temptations. Um, you know, I do my dance stuff. I do whatever I can do to get... I go out in the middle of the crowd with my wireless microphone and jump into girls' laps and, you know, nothing like the smile on a, on a 55-year-old lonely woman who hasn't, you know, just got done raising all of her kids because the husband died 30 years ago and uh, she wanted to hear One Way Out by the Almond Brothers. So we could provide that. We do it. And then she's got this smile. And then everybody's smiling for her. Before you know it, you got a dance packed dance floor. Did I say dance packed dance floor?
I don't think I meant that, folks. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Woo. Anyways, being in a band is like being married, too. Each individual in the band has a responsibility. Number one responsibility is show up to the gig and do your part. Play your, play your instruments, sing your parts, sing your songs, entertain, 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 entertain. Comedy, material, music, you know, clothing, whatever it takes. Uh, we like to insult ourselves. People get a kick out of that. We like to insult each other. Jay will get out in the crowd on a certain song. I'm not going to tell you because you'll have to come and see the band to find out. Uh, we start playing a song and all of a sudden Jay gets this suspicious look on his face with his hat on and he sneaks out away from me and I'm looking for him and I chase him through the crowd and when I find him, he literally is trying to hide from me. When I find him, I grab him by his shirt in the back and I give him a little boot in the butt all the way back to the stage, okay? People go nuts over that, they love it. People will be over there, he's over here, we, we play campgrounds through the summer. You know, camping parties, you got a lot of people there. And, uh, it, you know, you'll have a kid over in the corner. He's over here. See, Davey, he's over here. You know, that's what it's about. And children are great at gigs. Oh, my God. Any little guy, man, if they can walk or rock in their bassinet, <laughs> they're stroller, they love to dance with us. I got video of that. I'll post it sometime. Old video. But, yeah, being in a band is like being married. You know? And if you love being married, and you're a musician, and you're good at being married, you can get along with your spouses and communicate, agree, agree to disagree, rehearse. We have full band practice, we have vocal rehearsal, and we have harmony rehearsals. Harmonies are my job. I teach the harmonies, Tommy and Jay find them on the, on the frets. Um, Bruce, our drummer, doesn't come to the to the uh, harmony vocal or harmony rehearsals. Woo! Have another talk, baby Z. Holy shit! So, what do you think of my picture up here, guys? Huh? Huh? What do you think? Huh? It's my YouTube channel. It's what you're watching right now. I need you to do me a favor. Please share this video with your friends. Tell everybody about this crazy guy in Buffalo on YouTube named Davy Z, who's a paramotor pilot newbie, got a trike out there. Gonna be flying that real soon. I'm a vocalist in a band. I'm 56, I got four grown kids and eight grandchildren, two of whom are grown. Almost 20 and almost 18, believe it or not. Um, beautiful wife, beautiful family. I got a lot of shit coming up. I was raised by an alcoholic, my dad best alcoholic I ever knew. His name was Virgil. You'll hear me use that name a lot. And my mom, Laureen. Lori, she was the best. The best mom anybody could ever ask for. The most loving. I still remember that feeling of her holding me when I was a baby and a little boy. God, I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. And I love my sisters and my brother. So, and all my friends. Big shout out to Dr. J, Tom Young, and Bruce Lamantia, my three bandmates. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging in there. And we got a good thing going, man. Midlife crisis rocks. We pack houses. Uh, we got a lot of shows coming up this summer, so keep an eye out. Um, also, a big shout out to all the paramotor pilots out there that I've been watching your videos and learning from. There's a handful of you. You're all going to be mentioned in my video coming up soon. I, actually, I have a trailer up on my channel here. It's about uh, a song being released, a video, and the name of the song is Nobody's Got What Tucker's Got. Hear that? Nobody's got what Tucker's got. Because he is one badass young man that flies paramotors very well, I must That's say. That's right. Tucker, you were the inspiration for me, and I know for a lot of other people. Kyle, second inspiration. Del Schwanz, for you, and for you. My videos, um, bro, I watch yours religiously. Let me know.